This conference will now be recorded. Okay, today's am I audible? Yes, sir. So today topic is approach to a child with hepatosplenomegaly and lymphadenopathy. Hepatomegaly. Okay. So what are the signs of abnormal liver? More than 3.5 centimeter below the right costal margin in a newborn is abnormal. Rubbery feel of, of liver is due to hepatitis. Tender in tender in case of acute hepatitis and right heart failure. Venous congestion. Firm in case of cirrhosis and nodular in case of malignancy. Note that liver is easily palpated in most children at 1 to 2 cm below the right costal margin. A normal liver should, should feel soft and is easily mobile upon inspiration. Okay, It should not be firm or hard. It should be soft in consistency and palpable 1 to 2 cm below the right costal margin. Beyond that, it should not be palpable. What are the mechanisms of hepatomegaly? Increase in the number of size of cells intrinsic to the liver, okay, liver cells, or infiltration of cells from outside. Increase in size of vascular space, vessels, and increase in the size of biliary space. Biliary uh, radicals will be there, no? They will be increased in size. And idiopathic, benign, we don't know exactly. So, mechanisms by which hepatomegaly is increase in the number of size of cells intrinsic to the liver and infiltration of cells from outside. Increase in the size of vascular space, increase in the size of biliary space and idiopathic unknown. Mechanisms of hepatomegaly increase in the number of size of cells of intrinsic to the liver is storage, first one, fat, malnutrition also can cause fatty liver. Obesity, metabolic liver disease, diseases of fatty oxidation defects, and rice syndrome, lipid infusion, total parenteral nutrition, cystic fibrosis, diabetes mellitus, medication related, and pregnancy. Okay, all these can cause storage of fat in liver and enlargement of liver. That is called as fatty liver. Specific lipid storage diseases like Gotcher's disease, Neyman Pick disease, Olman's disease can cause increase in size of liver. Glycogen storage diseases, multiple enzyme defects, total parenteral nutrition, infant of diabetic mother, back with Weidman syndrome. All this can cause increase in glycogen storage in the liver. Miscellaneous causes like alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, Wilson disease, hypervitaminosis A, and neonatal iron storage disease can cause hepatomegaly. Inflammatory causes, hepatocyte enlargement in case of hepatitis, viral causes acute and chronic, bacterial causes sepsis, abscess, phalangitis, toxic drugs, autoimmune, Copper cell enlargement, sarcoidosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, mast cell activation syndrome. All these are autoimmune causes. Copper cell enlargement, sarcoidosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, mast cell activation syndrome. Inflam infiltration of cells from outside. Primary liver day. Within the liver cells, it is primary liver tumors, benign, hepatocellular, focal nodular hyperplasia, and nodular regenerative hyperplasia. Hepatocellular adenoma, mesodermal adenoma, infantile hemangioendothelioma, mesenchymal hamartoma, cystic masses, colidocal cyst, hepatic cyst, hematoma, parasitic cyst, Pyogenic or amoebic cyst abscess. Okay. Malignant causes like hepatocellular carcinoma, hepatoblastoma, 
mesodermal carcinoma, angiosarcoma, and undifferentiated embryonal sarcoma. Secondary or metastatic process from outside, this is lymphomas can metastasize to liver, leukemias, histiocytosis, neuroblastoma, Wilms tumor. All these can metastasize their secondaries to the liver, leading to increase in size of liver, increased size of vascular space, intrahepatic obstruction to hepatic vein flow, veno-occlusive diseases like hepatic vein thrombosis in case of Bertschieri syndrome, hepatic vein web, suprahepatic causes, congestive heart failure, pericardial disease and tamponade, cardiac tamponade, all these cause congestive hepatomegaly. Congest constrictive pericarditis is also cause in case of TB pericarditis, later pericardium will become thick and fibrous will lead to constrictive pericarditis. Hematopoietic causes like sickle cell anemia, thalassemia. Increased size of biliary space in case of congenital hepatic fibrosis, Caroli disease, extrahepatic obstruction, idiopathy causes benign. So significant hepatomegaly with minimal or absent splenomegaly. So majority is only hepatomegaly with or without splenomegaly. That too minimal splenomegaly. What are the causes? Liver abscess. Because liver abscess usually will not cause any changes in spleen. Hydrated cyst also will not cause any changes in the spleen, much changes. Glycogen storage can have minimal splenomegaly, not beyond that. Cirrhosis. Cirrhosis also in case of portal hypertension can have splenomegaly. Otherwise, cirrhosis directly will not cause hepatomegaly, splenomegaly. Uh, primary or metastatic malignancy, mucopolysaccharidosis, veno-occlusive disease, and Bertschieri syndrome. Okay. All these cause predominantly hepatomegaly with minimal or absent splenomegaly. Spleen. Already you know, this is the hilum of spleen. Signs of abnormal spleen is more than 2 cm below the left costal margin, abnormally rough surface, tender spleen, hard spleen are abnormal signs. The soft, thin spleen may be palpable in 15% of neonates, 10% of normal children and 5% of adolescents. In most individuals, the spleen must be 2 to 3 times its normal size before it's, it is palpable. Remember this, in most individuals, the spleen must be two to three times of its normal size before it becomes palpable. Pathophysiology of splenomegaly, anatomic lesions, hyperplasia caused by hematologic disorders, infections, immunologic and inflammatory processes, congestive, storage diseases and malignancies. Okay, splenomegaly pathophysiology, anatomic lesions, Hyperplasia caused by hematologic disorders, infections, immunologic and inflammatory process, congestive and storage disorders and malignancies. Anatomic lesions like cysts, pseudocysts, amartomas, polysplenia syndrome, hemangiomas and lymphangiomas, hematoma or rupture, amartomas. Hyperple hyperplasia caused by hematologic disorders like acute and chronic hemolysis, hemoglobinopathies, sickle cell disease in infancy with or without sequestration crisis. Okay, hemoglobinopathies and sickle cell variants, thalassemia, major unstable hemoglobins. Yes, uh, erythrocyte membrane disorders like hereditary spirocytosis, elliptocytosis, and py pyropyclocytosis are membrane disorders leading to splenomegaly because they rupture and cause obstruction of blood circulation within the spleen and leads to congestive splenomegaly. 
erythrocyte enzyme defects severe g6pd deficiency pyruvate kinase deficiency immune hemolysis autoimmune or and isoimmune hemolysis paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea chronic iron deficiency extramedullary hematopoiesis and severe hemolytic anemias myeloproliferative disorders like Congenital chronic myelogenous leukemia (CML), juvenile CML, myelofibrosis with myeloid metaplasia, and polycythemia vera (osteopetrosis). These are myeloproliferative, means bone marrow within the bone marrow they proliferate and cause problems. Patients receiving granulocyte and granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factors also can cause splenomegaly. Infections. Bacterial acute sepsis, chronic infection, local infections. In acute sepsis, salmonella, typhi infection, streptococcus pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza type B, Staphylococcus aureus. Chronic infections, infective endocarditis, chronic meningococcemia, brucellosis, tularemia, cat scratch disease. All are chronic infections. Local infections like splenic abscess, Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus, less often Salmonella species, and polymicrobial species. Pyogenic liver abscess, anaerobic bacteria, gram negative enteric bacteria, finally cholangitis. All these are local, in, local infections splenic abscess, Salmonella sepsis, due to Salmonella sepsis, polymicrobial causes, and poly, py, py, pyogenic liver abscess, cholangitis. In case of viral, acute viral infections, especially in children, if you see congenital CMV, herpes simplex viruses. Okay, one second. So, uh, herpes simplex, rubella, hepatitis A, B, and C viruses, CMV, Epstein Barr viruses, viral hemo hemophagocytic syndromes, CMV, Epstein Barr virus, HHV6, all these are acute viral infections. Spirochetal, step syphilis, especially congenital syphilis and leptospirosis, rickets cell infections like Rocky mountain spotted fever, Q, Q fever typhus, fungal, mycobacterial, miliary tuberculosis, disseminated, histioplasmosis, South American blastomycosis, systemic candidiasis in immunocompromised patients, okay, fungal and mycobacterial, miliary tuberculosis in case of immunocompromised patients. Parasitic Malaria, toxoplasmosis, especially congenital toxocara canis, toxocara cati, leishmaniasis, calazar, cystiosomas, cystiosomiasis, hepatic portal involvement, trypanosomiasis. Immunologic and inflammatory processes like SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, mixed connective tissue disease, systemic vasculitis, serum sickness, drug hypersensitivity, especially to phenytoin, graft versus host disease, Jogren syndrome, cryoglobulinemia, amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, large granular lymphohistiocytosis, and neutropenia, histiocytosis syndromes, hemophagocytic syndromes, non-viral and familial, all this comes under immunologic and inflammatory processes. Malignancies, primary, leukemia, acute and chronic, Lymphoma, angiosarcoma, Hodgkin's disease, metastatic malignancies, storage disorders like lipoidosis, lipidosis, like Gotcher's disease, Neyman Peck disease, infantile, GM1 gangliosidosis, mucopolysaccharidosis, Hurler disease, Hunter disease, mucolipidosis, eye cell disease, CLO dosis, 
multiple sulfatase deficiency fucosidosis defects in carbohydrate metabolism like galactosemia fructose intolerance c blue histiocyte syndrome congestive causes like heart failure intrahepatic cirrhosis or fibrosis extrahepatic that is portal thrombosis splenic and hepatic vein obstruction thrombosis butcheri syndrome massive splenomegaly with minimal hepatomegaly remember these causes it is important and theory question for you massive splenomegaly portal hypertension thalassemia major chronic myelogenous leukemia cml myeloid metaplasia chronic malaria kala azar that is leishmaniasis visceral leishmaniasis is also called as kala azar gacher disease storage disorders okay and amyloidosis okay remember this portal hypertension thalassemia major cml myeloid metaplasia chronic malaria kala azar gacher's disease amyloidosis do not miss sequestration cases in case of sickle cell disease it is a medical emergency because blood will be pooling up within the spleen and can lead to mortality because of hypotension shock okay hepatosplenomegaly enlarged liver and spleen already previously we have seen some causes of hepatosplenom hepatosplenom hepatomegaly and splenomegaly now we are seeing both hepatosplenomegaly causes infective causes like viral hepatotropic that is a b c d and e viruses and other viruses like hep herpes cytomegalovirus epstein barr virus varicella virus hiv virus rubella virus adenovirus enterovirus and arboviruses all these viruses will are lead to hepatosplenomegaly protozoal infections like malaria kala azar amoebic uh, amoeba toxoplasmosis all these are protozoal causes bacteria septicemia tuberculosis brucellosis syphilis helminths hydatid visceral larva migrans fungal histoplasmosis all these are the infective causes of hepatosplenomegaly hematopoietic causes of hepatosplenomegaly are hemolytic causes hemolytic disease of newborn thalassemia anemia chronic anemia metabolic causes like neiman pick gangliode gangliosidosis gacher's disease fucosidosis volman disease glycogen storage disease sialidosis galacto sialidosis manosidosis malignancies like leukemia histiocytic syndromes myeloproliferative syndromes and lymphomas cause hepatosplenomegaly immunological causes like chronic granulomatous diseases hereditary neutrophilia and omen syndrome developmental causes like congestive congenital hepatic fibrosis will lead to hepatosplenomegaly congestive causes like hepatic vein obstruction like butcheri syndrome constrictive pericarditis we already heard about this if there is a rash associated with hepatosplenomegaly differential diagnosis include infections like bacterial typhoid there is a rose spots appearing over the body in typhoid brucellosis okay and syphilis viral infectious mononucleosis epstein barr virus causes infectious mononucleosis rubella cytomegalovirus hepatitis b virus infection parasitic toxoplasmosis autoimmune systemic type of rheumatoid arthritis sle drugs phenytoin others langer hans cell histiocytosis if you come to lymphadenopathy we have seen till now hepatosplenomegaly causes now 
we are going to see lymphadenopathy causes. Most lymph nodes are not usually palpable in the newborn. With antigen exposure over a period of years, lymphoid tissue increases in volume so that cervical, axillary, inguinal nodes are often palpable during childhood. They are not considered enlarged until their diameter is more than 1 cm for cervical and axillary nodes and more than 1.5 cm for inguinal nodes. Only then you consider it as lymphadenopathy. Understood? For a practical question also, more than 1 cm for cervical and axillary nodes, more than 1.5 cm for inguinal nodes is lymphadenopathy. Lymph node enlargement is caused by proliferation of normal lymphoid elements or by infiltration with malignant or phagocytic cells. Okay. Proliferation of normal presence of lymphoid elements or by infiltration by malignant cells or phagocytic cells. Remember this. Acutely infected nodes are usually tender, means painful. They may also have erythema redness and warmth over the or like the skin fluctuants will be present in case of abscess formation tuberculous nodes may be matted means matted means attached they will be fused to each other chronic infection many signs are present or are not present in case of chronic infections tumor bearing nodes they will be firm and non-tender they will not they will be painless in enlargement is always dangerous Majority of the times, not always, majority of the times it is dangerous, firm and non-tender. And may, and may be matted or fixed to the skin or underlying structures. Generalized adenopathy, enlargement of more than two non-contiguous node regions. He is caused by systemic disease and is often accompanied by abnormal physical findings in other systems. Understood? Generalized adenopathy. Enlargement of more than two non-contiguous region, node regions is caused by systemic disease and is often accompanied by abnormal physical findings in other systems. Okay, always generalized adenopathy is very uh, important and you should analyze all the physical findings. Okay? More than two non-contiguous means like uh, cervical and uh, inguinal, axillary and inguinal. You should always take it as a generalized adenopathy. Regional adenopathy is most frequently the result of infection of the involved node or the draining area. If there is infection in the throat, some submandibular and cervical nodes can get enlarged. That is regional adenopathy. Understood? It, the, it is not considered as generalized adenopathy. When due, when due to infectious agents other than bacteria, adenopathy may be characterized by atypical anatomic areas, a prolonged pores, and a draining sinus, lack of prior pyogenic infection, and unusual clues in the history, like cat scratches, tuberculosis exposure, and venereal disease. Okay? You should always find about cat scratches, tuberculosis exposure, and Venereal diseases. Generalized lymphadenopathy, common causes in case of infant, in case of child, in case of adolescent. In case of infant, if you take, it is syphilis. In case of toxoplasmosis, because congenital causes can lead to toxoplasmosis in infant, no? So CMV, cytomegalovirus and HIV. In child, if you take viral infection, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, HIV virus, toxoplasmosis, adolescent, viral infection, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, HIV, toxoplasmosis, and syphilis. Rare causes, Chagas disease, congenital, okay, serum sickness, serum sickness, congenital leukemia, congenital tuberculosis, reticular endotheliosis, lymphoproliferative disease, metabolic storage disease, and histiocytic disorders in case of infant. 
child serum sickness sle juvenile rheumatoid arthritis leukemia lymphoma tuberculosis measles sarcoidosis fungal infection plague langerhans cell histiocytosis chronic granulomatous disease sinus histiocytosis drug reactions in case of children but they are rare causes in case of adolescents serum sickness sle jra leukemia lymphoma hodgkins disease if you see hodgkins disease appear in adolescents lymphoproliferative disease disease tuberculosis histiocyto histioplasmosis and fungal infections plague drug reaction castleman disease local lymphadenopathy causes if cervical lymph nodes are enlarged then oropharyngeal infection like viral or group a streptococcal infections scalp infection mycobacterial lymphadenitis tuberculosis and non tuberculous mycobacteria viral infection epstein barr virus cytomegalovirus hhv6 cat scratch disease toxoplasmosis kawasaki disease thyroid disease sinus histiocytosis autoimmune lymphoproliferative disease all this leads to cervical that is local cervical lymphadenopathy okay anterior articular auricular lymph nodes conjunctivitis other eye infections oculoglandular tularemia facial cellulitis posterior auricular in a case of otitis media infection of the middle ear viral infections like rubella and paroviruses supraclavicular nodes usually malignancy is accompanied malignancy or infection in the mediastinum right metastatic malignancy from the abdomen lymphoma and tuberculosis epitrochlear in case of hand infections arm infection lymphoma sarcoid and syphilis epitrochlear okay even though these are boring you should know some of the causes of each lymphadenopathy including cervical uh, and axillary and inguinal inguinal if you take urinary tract infection venereal disease lower extremity suppurative infection means that is uh, pus pyogenic infection of the lower extremity plague hilar hilar lymph nodes in the chest tuberculosis histioplasmosis blastomycosis coccidiomycosis mycosis leukemias lymphomas hodgkin disease metastatic malignancy sarcoidosis castleman disease so tuberculosis is mycobacterial infection histioplasmosis blastomycosis and coccidiomycosis are fungal infections leukemia lymphoma hodgkin disease metastatic many all are malignancies sarcoidosis is an uh, inflammatory is uh, fibrotic disease and castleman disease axillary uh, cat scratch disease arm or chest wall infection malignancy of chest wall leukemia lymphoma brucellosis understood cat scratch this is arm or chest wall infection malignancy of chest wall leukemia or lymphoma brucellosis abdominal malignancies mesenteric adenitis measles tuberculosis ersenia group a streptococcus understood hepatosplenomegaly with lymphadenopathy hepatosplenomegaly with generalized lymphadenopathy differential diagnosis are infection previously we have seen first hepatomegaly splenomegaly hepatosplenomegaly generalized lymphadenopathy and now hepatosplenomegaly with generalized lymphadenopathy causes differential diagnosis are infections bacteria like typhoid brucellosis miliary tuberculosis and syphilis viral infectious mononucleosis parasitic toxoplasmosis hematological causes like lymphoma and leukemia metabolic causes like lehman pick's disease harlars disease rheumatological causes like rheumatoid arthritis sle drugs phenytoin others are langerhans cell histiocytosis what questions to be asked is there any history of recent infection example rash pharyngitis cough shortness of breath fever exposure to any allergen poor feeding malaise all these 
or HG relevant to recent infection. Has the child consumed any contaminated food or experienced any diarrhea and or vomiting for typhoid? Is there any history of loss of consciousness or seizures in case of any infection, meningitis and all these things, local infection? Are there any constitutional symptoms such as fever, night sweats and weight loss in case of malignancies? Is there any abnormal bruising, bone pain or history of frequent infections? Okay, all this in case of, in case of malignancies and immunosuppression. Does the child have any pre-existing liver disease, lung disease or congenital heart disease? Were there any complications during pregnancy, delivery and after delivery should be looked into? Are there any growth and developmental concerns? Was there persistent unresolved jaundice following delivery? Is there any maternal history of hepatitis B or C, CMV bar, Epstein bar virus? or HIV, we should ask about maternal history of these because intrauterine it could transfer to the baby and leads to congenital problem, okay. Does the child have any history of surgeries or transfusion in case of uh, thalassemia, sickle cell disease, we, the child may undergo splenectomy and re 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 recurrent blood transfusions may be required. Is there any family history of cystic fibrosis, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, storage diseases, liver diseases, heart diseases, autoimmune diseases or malignancy in the family, you should always ask. Has the child had any change in the color of stool? Okay, because any obstruction to the biliary tract can lead to color change in the stool. What is there any history of drug or toxin ingestion? Is there any exposure to radiation? Is the child on any medication as of now, right now? Is there any history of travel or trauma? General physical examination, what are the findings? Skin, petechia and purpura in K and associated with thrombocytopenia, autoimmune disorders and malignancies. Jaundice, hemolytic anemia or liver disease. Rashes, infection, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, infective endocarditis. I, icterus, uveitis, iritis, okay, jaundice, uveitis and iritis, in case of sarcoidosis or rheumatoid arthritis, cherry red retinal spots or cloudy retina, Kescher pleasure link, in case of Wilson disease, CVS and respiratory system, murmurs, shortness of breath, fatigue, in case of anemia or heart failure, Abnormal heart sounds like S3 and S4 heart sound in case of congenital heart diseases, shortness of breath, abnormal breath sounds, okay, alpha and antitrypsin deficiencies, GIT, tenderness, distension of the abdomen, ascites and aptosplenomegaly, musculoskeletal causes, musculoskeletal, uh, we have to find uh, joint tenderness in rheumatoid arthritis, lupus and hepatitis, bone pain malignancy, neurological, poor vision, Osteopetrosis, loss of developmental milestones, storage diseases, chronic infection or immunodeficiency. What are the signs of chronic liver disease? Examine the fingers for white nails, that is leukonychia, with loss of lunula, half moon shaped at the nail base, and ankle edema, all due to hypoalbuminemia. Leukonychia, lunula, loss of lunula, and ankle edema. All this due to hypoalbuminemia, decreased albumin in blood. Look for spider neva in the upper half of the body, palmar erythema, gynecomastia in case of males and male child, testicular atrophy, all due to estrogen excess. Look for bruising due to thrombocytopenia, hypersplenism, reduced hepatic synthesis of coagulation factors like 2, 7, 9, and 10. Multiple falls due to alcohol intoxication. Look for muscle wasting from malnutrition and or local or liver synthesis. Failure. Examination for signs of liver failure. Look for any coarse flapping tremors in the outstretch hand. That is called asterisks. Due to metabolic brainstem dysfunction. Other causes include heart, renal, and respiratory failure. 
Smell the patient's breath to detect fat or hepatic acid. Sweetish, musty smell due to accumulation of volatile amines, methyl mercaptans. Check for signs of hepatic encephalopathy, grade 1 to 4, due to metabolic changes affecting cerebral function. Liver examination. Palpation. Start in the right iliac fossa. Place your hand flat on the abdomen with your fingers pointing upwards and sensing fingers, index and middle finger, lateral to the muzzle. And so that the finger tips lie parallel to the rectus sheet. Keep your hand stationary. Ask the patient to breathe deeply through the mouth. Feel for the liver edge as it descends on inspiration. Ask the patient to take a deep inspiration and then palpate the liver edge. Move your hand progressively up the abdomen one centimeter at a time between the each breath the patient takes until you reach the postal margin and detect the liver edge. Right lobe is palpable in the right hypochondrium or lumbar region depending on the extent of enlargement. Left lobe is palpable in the epigastrium in, in it indicates chronic hepatomegaly. Okay, this is how you should palpate. McLeod's clinical examination. You should palpate the liver like this. Percussion. Liver span is determined better by percussion than by palpation in children. Percussion along with midclavicular line is find to find the upper margin of the liver. The transition from resonant to dullness indicates that upper liver border. It usually lies in the fourth intercostal space, upper border of liver. Resonance below the fifth intercostal space suggests emphysema or occasionally the interposition of transverse colon between the liver and the diaphragm. It is called chiladitis sign. Measure the distance in centimeter below the costal margin in the midclavicular line or from the upper border of the dullness to the palpable leverage. Continue percussion down the subcostal region, keeping fingers parallel to the ribs. The note runs resonant beyond the liver lower margin of the liver. What is scratch test? Place the diaphragm of your stethoscope just above the right costal margin at the midclavicular line. Lightly scratch the skin of the abdomen with the fingertip along the midclavicular line, starting from the below the umbilicus towards the postal margin. Change in the sound indicates the liver edge. This is the scratch test. Note the size, surface, consistency, margins, tenderness, or the presence of any masses or bruit. Liver size. Liver is usually described in centimeter below the right costal margin in the midclavicular line. Liver span is the distance between the upper and lower borders of the liver in the midclavicular line. That is liver span. Normal liver size estimates are based on age-related clinical indices such as degree of extension of liver edge below the costal margin, span of dullness to the percussion, or the length of vertical axis of the liver as estimated from the imaging techniques. The liver span increases linearly with body weight and age in both the sexes ranging from 4.5 to 5 cm at one week of age to approximately 7 to 8 cm in boys and 6 to 6.5 cm in girls by 12 years of age. Remember, 4.5 to 5 at one week of age to 7 to 8 centimeter in boys and 6 to 6.5 centimeter in girls by 12 years of age. Remember these figures. Important for your examination. Normal liver span in an adult is 10 to 15 centimeter. So these are the expected liver span of an infant, child, and adolescent by percussion method. If you take by six months in males, it is 2.4 centimeter. By 12 years, if you take 6.5 cm in males and 5.6 cm in case of females. Pattern of liver enlargement. First, this is the costal margin, that is rib gauge margin. This is the liver edge. 
mild enlargement this is called as this is moderate enlargement this is severe marked enlargement the lower edge of the right lobe of the liver extend downwards this is the radial lobe and is palpable as a broad mass in some normal people downward displacement of the liver by the diaphragm that due to pneumothorax air in the chest emphysema or respiratory distress or thoracic organs can create an erroneous impression of hepatomegaly but total liver span is normal sometimes liver may be palpable below the costal margin but total span is reduced suggesting cirrhosis surface gently roll the fingers over the surface of the liver nodular in cirrhosis and malignancy consistency of the liver hard as a bone in hepatic malignancy firm as a tip of nose in case of chronic conditions like obstructive jaundice cirrhosis or hemolytic anemias soft in case of acute viral hepatitis or congestive cardiac failure margins smooth in case of normal liver sharp and leafy in case of cirrhosis or malignancy tenderness while palpating the liver see if the patient winces for with pain or not liver is tender in case of acute viral hepatitis congestive cardiac failure hepatic amebiasis pyopyemic liver abscess hepatoma actinomycosis wheels this is all the, these are causes of tender hepatomegaly this is important in practical examination they may ask what are the causes of tender hepatomegaly you should remember bruise over the liver means abnormal auscultatory sounds over the liver may be heard in hepatoma arteriovenous malformation hepatocellular cancer and alcoholic hepatitis pulse day liver indicates tricuspid regurgitation splenic examination palpation patient should be supine and relax relaxation is improved if legs and necks are slightly flexed start palpating from the lower left quadrant in the infants as the spleen tends to enlarge inferiorly towards the left iliac fossa palpation should be started from the right lower quadrant in older children start from the umbilicus keep your hand stationary and ask the patient to breathe in deeply through the mouth feel for the splenic edge as it descends on the inspiration move your hand diagonally upwards towards the hypochondria one centimeter at a time between each breath and the patient takes feel the costal margin along its length as the position of the spleen tip is variable if you cannot feel the splenic edge ask the patient to roll towards you and uh, on to his right side repeat the same as above palpate with your right hand placing your left hand behind the patient's left lower ribs pulling the rib cage forward okay this is how these are the techniques of pal palpation of spleen palpation of spleen continued with the patient in the right lateral position the minimal splenic enlargement can be detected by examining either from the front or in the back of the patient hooking method hooking maneuver or middleton's maneuver place the patient's left fist under the under their left posterior chest position yourself on the patient's left side facing the patient's feet using both hands curl your fingers under the patient's left costal margin ask the patient to take a long and deep breath and attempt to palpate the spleen with your fingertips hooking method or middleton's method hook like a hook he is hooking see here he is hooking the lower costal margin left lower costal margin percussion that is also called as castles method Percuss the lower intercostal space in the left anterior axillary line. In normal cases, due to dull node is present only on inspiration. In 
Clinomegaly, dull note is present both in inspiration and expiration. More useful in infectious mononuclears where direct palpation can cause rupture. Casals point. Prop space. Bound superiorly by the sixth rib, laterally by the mid axillary line, and inferiorly by the costal margin. Dullness to percussion indicates splenomegaly. Prop space is, is bounded superiorly by the sixth rib, laterally by the mid axillary line, and inferiorly by the costal margin. Dullness is indicates splenomegaly because splenic enlargement comes to this prop space. This is prop space. Okay, spleen enlargement covers this completely. Percussion by Nixon's method. Place the patient in right lateral decubitus position. Benign percussion midway along the left costal margin. Proceed in a line perpendicular to the left costal margin. If the upper limit of the dullness extends beyond 8 cm above the left costal margin in, in adults, this is possibly a splenomegaly. Splenic size. Mild splenomegaly, only tip is palpable. Moderate splenomegaly, easily palpable and palpable 3 to centimeters below the costal margin. Massive it is, more than 7 centimeter below the costal margin, it will be extending up to or beyond the umbilicus. Understood? Mild, they will ask in exam. Mild is only tip palpable or palpable 1 to 2 centimeter below the costal margin. Moderate is easily palpable but not reaching the umbilicus, 3 to 7 centimeters below the left costal margin. Massive splenomegaly extends up to umbilicus or beyond the umbilicus. Or if it is palpable more than 7 centimeters below the costal margin. Patterns of splenic enlargement. Costal enlargement, tip, tip enlargement, costal margin, this is costal margin, tip enlargement, moderate enlargement and margin, marked enlargement. Hackett's classification of splenomegaly. Stage 0 is not palpable, mild is just palpable, moderate is midway between costal margin and umbilicus, moderate is up to umbilicus, severe is between the umbilicus and pubic symphysis, and severe is five is stage 5 is up to pubic symphysis. Understood. Hackett's classification of splenomegaly. This is first, second, third, fourth, and fifth up to pubic symphysis. Beyond the umbilicus is four. Third, just above the umbilicus, midway between the costal margin and the umbilicus. Consistency of spleen, soft in case of enteric fever, that is typhoid, firm in case of hemolytic anemia, moderate to severely enlarged spleen is usually firm. Splenic notch is felt as an indentation on the lower medial border of the spleen. Auscultation. Friction, rub, inflammation, tumor, infarction, systolic murmur over the spleen, massive splenomegaly, dilated, tortuous splenic artery. Okay, systolic murmur over the spleen is massive splenomegaly with dilated, tortuous splenic artery will lead to systolic murmur over the spleen. What are the differential diagnoses for the splenic mass? Left kidney mass, left brain adrenal mass, left adrenal mass, left colonic mass, and retroperitoneal mass. Pseudosplenomegaly. Abnormally enlarged mesenteric connections may produce a wandering or totic spleen. Okay, also called as totic spleen. A large left lobe of liver, a left upper quadrant mass and or a splenic hematoma may be mistaken for splenomegaly. Splenic cysts may contribute to splenomegaly. Okay. These may be congenital or acquired after trauma or infection. Splenosis after splenic rupture or an accessory spleen 
also mimic splenomegaly okay most are not palpable hypersplenism what is hypersplenism increased splenic function sequestration or destruction of the circulating blood cells resulting in peripheral blood cytopenia increased bone marrow activity and splenomegaly it is usually secondary to other disease and may be cured by treatment of the underlying condition or if absolutely necessary moderate by mo moderated by splenectomy understood hypersplenism is sequestration or destruction of circulating cells resulting in blood, peripheral blood cytopenia this is also the practical question they were asking practical exam hypersplenism what is hypersplenism okay peripheral blood cytopenia increased bone marrow activity and splenomegaly congestive splenomegaly banty syndrome splenomegaly may result from obstruction in the hepatic portal or splenic veins okay splenic venous flow may be obstructed by masses of sickle erythrocytes when the spleen is in the site is the site of vascular obstruction splenectomy cures hypersplenism this is also a question practical question tropical what is tropical splenomegaly syndrome this big spleen currently defined as hyperreactive malarial syndrome <clears throat> viscerapoptosis viscerapoptosis is a prolapse or sinking of abdominal viscera internal organs below their natural position any or all of the organs may be placed displace it downwards may give false impression of hepatomegaly or splenomegaly lymph nodes general principles inspect for visible lymphadenopathy palpate one side at a time using the fingers of each hand in turn compare with the nodes of the contralateral side assess the site of enlargement size consistency and tenderness determine whether the node is fixed to the surrounding or deep structures and or to the skin measure the main nodes okay this is the method you can see in the clinical methods macleod's or hutchison's clinical methods how to palpate the cervical axillary and inguinal group of lymph nodes you can see in the clinical methods the axillary group of lymph node palpation epitrochlear lymph node inguinal lymph nodes and laboratory investigations complete blood count peripheral blood picture esr liver enzymes <clears throat> liver function tests including blood clotting tests serum electrolytes blood urine nitrogen urine analysis cbc the differential and blood count uh, peripheral blood uh, smear fasting blood glucose hepatic hepatitis serology all these are important in case of torch infections storage disorders all necessary investigations including bone marrow biopsy in case of storage disorder is required common laboratory findings in storage disorders are glycogen storage disorder what happened to lactate all will decrease lactate defect in glycogen gluconeogenesis also lactate will decrease defect in fatty acid metabolism also it will decrease free fatty acids will be normal in glycogen storage disorders in defect in gluconeogenesis it may increase fatty acid metabolism defects normal okay beta hydroxy butyrate normal in case of glycogen storage disorders and gluconeogenesis defects defect in fatty acid metabolism may increase liver imaging abdominal ultrasound with doppler hyper ecogenic hepatitic parenchyma can be seen with metabolic diseases abdominal ct or mri hepatic masses biliary tree anatomical obstructions echocardiogram congenital heart defects yes ercp stones liver biopsy this is the right kidney and the spleen splenic imaging image imaging uh not routinely done ultrasound ct or mri radioactive that is technetium labeled 99 m sulfur colloid scintigraphy may be required splenomegaly left kidney with spleen lymph node this is fine needle aspiration cytology biopsies and excision biopsy using ultrasound guidance 
lymphangiogram this is lymphangiogram assessment of abdominal lymph nodes or axillary group of lymph nodes this is lymphangiogram okay understood